Hey everybody, this is Klaus from Plant Based News. I hope you're staying safe during this coronavirus pandemic. In this video, we go through the best brain healthy foods to have during the quarantine. This is a video by Dr. Dean and Aisha Shirtsai. Thank you to them for letting us re-upload this video. Check out their channel called Team Shirtsai linked below, where they talk about the link between healthy lifestyle and brain health, and their work as directors of the Alzheimer's Prevention Programme and Loma Linda. They've also featured in an online summit, which I've linked down below, which is free, and it's about plant-based nutrition and health. Um, there's gonna be more information at the end of this video about that summit, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this video. We're living in a very unprecedented time, and we wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about foods and brain health in such a dire situation. What to buy, what to stock, and how to live a stress-free life as far as food is concerned. But before we get to that, I think it's important to talk about some of the things that you've heard, but we want to reiterate. Um, the most important thing you can do at this point which is the number one factor in public health is social distancing. That's what cuts off the pattern of repeat infections and spread of infections. So social distancing is the most critical thing. If you don't have to go to work, stay home. If your kids can stay home, please do so. If you have to be in public, please maintain that distance, uh, two meters or six feet or so. It's critical to maintain that separation in order to make sure that the virus doesn't spread uh, exponentially. The second thing is to wash clean as often as possible. Wash your hands in between touching of items, whenever you've touched things that you haven't uh, uh, seen before, or even in your home or outside of the home right. or at work or in, in places that there's a lot of public interaction. Please make sure that you have uh, wipes and, and, and Hand sanitizer. sanitizers that yeah. can clean the spaces. There's no way you can avoid all the circumstances. It's a game of probabilities and numbers. The more you clean, the more, more likely that you will avoid the, the uh, virus. So those are two of the most important factors. In the meantime, we have to prepare. Yes. Meaning that we don't know how long this process, this, this uh, journey would last. It could be a couple of months, it could be longer than that, <clears throat> it could be seasonal, or it actually could be year-round, or it could actually have, what we heard today, is several cycles, meaning that somebody could get infected and then reinfected again. We don't know. So we have to plan for the worst case scenario. Given that, one of the most important things we can do to even achieve the social distancing is have a lot of food available at home so you don't have to travel. So you can maintain cleanliness for the family. Yeah. You can maintain a, uh, an environment where you can control all the factors or as much of the factors as you can. So with that said, food, again, becomes one of the most important factors to, uh, to manage and, and, and to keep the system clean. We came up with a plan of identifying certain foods that are non-perishable, first of all, and then second, easily made at home, mm -hmm. deliciously made at home. And, and thirdly, healthy. Absolutely. This is the time. The most to, important thing, exactly. actually. <clears throat> to maintain your health. You know, there's a lot of talk about this food being healthy and, and, and um, you know, certain foods being anti-inflammatory and, and, and antioxidant. Well, it's not a particular thing. It's the foods that you have at home together affecting that, that immune response, that health status. So the foods that we're going to highlight are the ones that are non-perishable, yes. that can maintain for months at a time, that are easily assembled into tasty, wonderful foods, but at the same time, most importantly, maintain your health. Absolutely. Uh, this is not the time to lose that healthy uh, uh, health that you've achieved. The natural tendency, the natural habit of humanity is under stress to go to survival state. And survival state means any food that you can get your hand on and foods that have been programmed to seem like they're tasty, the high sugar, high fat foods, yeah. because they're, they're the survival foods, right. but they're the unhealthiest. One of the things we noticed is that the first aisles that were gone or empty were the chips and fries and you know, all, all these the uh, processed, that are processed. processed foods yeah. were gone. Cookies. We saw one lady that had a whole cart full of cookies and chips. I know. And, and that's the natural tendency that we have to go to the survival mode, which is fat and sugar. Yes. This is not the time for that. In fact, if anything, you should get healthier during this time to actually fight any infections that, might, uh, that you might experience. 
Exactly. All right, so we're going to start with certain categories that we put together. We're going to start with whole grains and pseudo grains. Um, we have several examples of the things that are non-perishable, will stay on the shelf for a long time, and are absolutely delicious when you prepare them. And of course, they're very, very healthy. The first item is brown rice. Brown rice has a lot of fiber, a lot of protein, a lot of complex carbohydrates. The second thing that is incredibly healthy is our oatmeal, especially you know extra thick rolled oats or steel cut oats. Um, these can be used for breakfast. Again, very high in fiber, complex carbohydrates and proteins. Great for breakfast, great for making muffins, granola, adding it to soups and um, really satiating. The third item is quinoa. Quinoa is a pseudo grain, but it comes under the umbrella of whole grains. It's amazing. It's a complete protein. Um, and as you know, it stores very well on the shelf for months without going bad and rancid. You don't have to refrigerate it as some people uh, say. And it's absolutely delicious. Again, you can mix it with oatmeal and brown rice. You can have it with your oatmeal for breakfast and mix it in in muffins and baked goods as well. Then we have several other miscellaneous grains like buckwheat. We have spelt flour, which is a whole grain and can be used in muffins. The next item is amaranth. Now amaranth is incredibly healthy. Uh, one fourth cup has seven grams of protein and has seven grams of fiber. And uh, I will post some recipes of how to use amaranth in bowls mixed with quinoa, with brown rice, and it really, really bumps up the nutritional value of any meal. I also have farro. These are the 10 minute farros that I got from Trader Joe's. These are delicious. Oat groats. So oat groats are whole oats instead of it being steel cut or rolled. Oat groats are very delicious and you basically soak them overnight and boil them um, and you can actually have it as a breakfast. You can have it in soups and salads. Now these fibers are important because they're foundational. You can build everything around these sure. and they have the fiber, the protein and the bulk yeah. and that's what makes them so valuable. Um, so it's critical to build around those fibers because you can get a lot of it and the ones that Aisha was uh, pointing to, you can find them even now in, in a lot of uh, supermarkets because they're not sought after. Yeah, I did get whole wheat flour just in case we want to make waffles, pancakes or potentially some flatbreads in the oven as well. The other thing that keeps really well are these crisp breads, whole grain crisp breads or crackers. See if you can actually get these whole Kids grain. Kids love these. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful. They go yeah. so well with guacamole, with hummus, with nut cheeses. Exactly. There's another example. Now let's focus on legumes or beans. I have different examples. We have kidney beans. We have great northern beans chickpeas, black beans, and I went to some you know, Middle Eastern stores and some international markets and found amazing green lentils and yellow split peas. Obviously these store really well. Incredible source of plant proteins, clean mm -hmm. proteins, fiber, complex carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals. It's absolutely delicious. It's critical to read labels to make sure that they are low in sodium because a lot of times when they're canned, they have high levels of sodium, Very so true. it's critical to be aware of that. The ones that I got had no salt added in them, and even if you get the regular ones that have salt in them, get rid of the fluid inside the can and rinse the beans. The next category that we want to talk to you about are nuts and seeds. Talk about a great source of healthy fats. Exactly. Packed with polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats, Choices are walnuts, cashews, hazelnuts, almonds, basically anything. If you can't find peanut butter or nut butters, it's very easy to actually make your own nut butters at home. Mm -hmm. All you need is a blender and an oven. When you warm up nuts in an oven, it actually makes it softer. And you put it in your blender and you make amazing nut butters. Exactly. And you can add a little bit of maple syrup or any added spice like cinnamon and you have yourself an amazing spread. Perfect. Seeds are great sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Don't forget to stock up with some seeds. Hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds. The next category is fruits and vegetables. 
Now we don't have enough evidence that the coronavirus spreads through foods and food packages. The latest data and the latest uh, guidelines from the CDC does not uh, give us details on how to um, process and clean vegetables and fruits. But the important thing being that it's important to have fruits and vegetables. That's a major source of vitamins and nutrients and it's critical to have them. And if you get them fresh, make sure that you get ones that are peelable and wash them as often as possible. And that's the best we can do. The data so far coming from other countries and from CDC is that there doesn't seem to be any cases of transmission through these, uh, these uh, sources or these vectors. And try to lean towards buying produce that you have to cook them. So things like cauliflower, cooking them and steaming them, or sweet potatoes where you peel mm -hmm. them and cut them and bake them or boil them. Other ideas of including produce in your food are buying frozen vegetables and fruits, such as these. A berry blend is an amazing uh, source of berries that you can add in your oatmeal, in your smoothies. We also bought some stir-fry vegetables, frozen ones from Trader Joe's, and these amazing slabs of chopped spinach. I could probably do some exercise with this. They're pretty wonderful. And you know, you can add this to your pastas, to curries, um, and make amazing stir fries with them as well. Absolutely. So the key is to clean yeah. and wash and peel and boil and bake where it can be done. Yeah. And buy fruits that are peelable, like Dean said, oranges, apples, mangoes, bananas, and Dates. Dates can actually be soaked in hot water to be cleaned, so you can actually have it um, after they're thoroughly cleaned in hot water. When you soak it in hot water um, and blend it, you can actually make date syrup, which goes on top of waffles and pancakes, and it stores really well. So you can store it for a long time outside of the refrigerator. And of course, having some root vegetables is, is important. Um, potatoes, especially sweet potatoes, very healthy, keeps um, in your pantry for you know a couple of weeks. Um, onions and garlic are also very healthy and they keep in your pantry for a long time. So make sure you get these. The next category is herbs and spices. Now, I love having herbs and spices around the house, especially dried herbs. And it makes up for the lack of fresh produce. Pound for pound, herbs and spices have more anti-inflammatory uh, compounds compared to the ones that you find in fresh ones. So stocking up on spices like turmeric, cayenne pepper, oregano, dill, basil, cilantro, or uh, coriander, so many different things is important. Now the last category are miscellaneous stuff and I wanted to focus on plant milks. Getting organic unsweetened plant milk like this one. This is West Soy plain soy milk. It's my favorite one. These are, you don't have to put them in the refrigerator. You can store them in shelf and once you open them then you can put them in the refrigerator. Getting you know several of these, storing them in a dark cool place and refrigerating them after they open is a great idea. The kids um, love these. The kids love these and I make soy yogurt from this as well which is delicious. Stocking up on vegetable broth cubes is a good way of saving space and storing it for a long time. Each cube, there's six of them here, each cube actually makes two cups of vegetable broth. So this was a good idea. Textured vegetable protein or TVP is a wonderful thing to have in your shelf. Now TVP is made out of defatted soy flour and is a very, very high source of protein. One fourth cup of TVP has 13 grams of protein. What you can do is you basically hydrate it in water or in broth and it expands and it becomes like a veggie crumble that you can make um, a bolognese sauce on top of um, pasta or with brown rice and vegetables. Very good thing to have. Having cocoa powder to add in your cereal and your milk. A sweetener, our sweetener of choice is monk fruit because it has zero calories and it doesn't increase your blood sugar levels. It's processed, but it's a great replacement for sugar, for coffee and tea. So that's an example of the foods that you can um, get and store during these times. And as we move on, we will show you more recipes of how to create amazing delicious food from these pantry items.
So the point of this video was to create a foundation of healthy eating under difficult circumstances. We might have this situation last for weeks, months or longer. But this is also a time for us to learn the habit of maintaining healthy eating habits and tasty and easy patterns that you can create around fundamental foods that will build your immunity, will build your resilience. We know that certain populations are at greater risk. Age is a risk factor, chronic diseases are risk factors, and smoking is a risk factor. But we think that even those who don't eat healthy put themselves at a higher risk. So by eating healthy, you boost your immune system and make yourself resistant or actually resist the onslaught of bacteria or this viral infection or other viral infections. So this is a great time to build two habits, habit of eating healthy under difficult situations and also to build a stockpile for other circumstances like this. You learn that you don't have to run, run around during emergencies going for, uh, from paper towels to toilet papers, but going to the fundamental things that will build your health. This is uh, why we made this video. Thank you for joining us today. We will put in the link at the bottom of this video directing you to a website where you can download a list of all of these things that we just talked about and a list of things to buy, essentially a shopping list. And over the next few weeks, we will come up with very easy, tasty and healthy recipes using these items. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up if you like it and share it with everyone. We all have to go through this time together and we all have to be available to support each other. And thank goodness for social media and video conferencing and this specifically so that we can be in touch. We really appreciate your messages. I can't tell you how happy we feel when we hear back from you, when we read your comments, know that we do. And thank you so much again for joining us. We are Team Shares Eye on social media. Uh, follow us for more information and give us feedback of what we should talk about next time we see you on this channel. Until then, have a great day. Do you want to have a clear, happy and healthy mind at every age and stage of your life? If you feed your brain right, you can actually prevent diseases including Alzheimer's and other types of dementia, no matter how old you are. So what is the number one factor you need to focus on for brain health? It's the food on your plate. My name is Ocean Robbins. Each year, my dad and colleague, John Robbins, and I host the Food Revolution Summit. You might have heard of him. He's the two million copy best-selling author of Diet for a New America and many other books. In the Food Revolution Summit, he interviews 24 of the top food experts on the planet. During this free online global event, you will get access to some of the most brilliant, revolutionary experts and ideas about food and health. You'll leave the Food Revolution Summit with trustworthy, actionable, and empowering information that you can use right away. So just enter your name and email right on this page to join in the free summit and to get your Brain Superfoods Handbook. The truth is, you were meant to thrive. So grab the tools you need to put this life-changing wisdom into action. Enter your name and email to get your handbook and to join us. And I will see you in the summit.